An investigative reporter, Amy Fine Collins, and many other de such dedicated individuals have done some a great deal of work into looking into the child sex trade in the United States. And this is an issue that has gone largely ignored for decades. It's almost as though those in power don't seem to think that it's a real thing. And it's something that has been erased from the consciousness of the American public. However, information is showing that it is the fastest growing, uh, the fastest growing business for underground organizations, organized crime, etc. It's the second most lucrative commodity traded illegally after guns and drugs. Now, as Amy Collins notes, it's become more lucrative and much safer to sell malleable teens than drugs or guns. A pound of heroin or an AK-47 can be retailed once, but a young girl can be sold 10 to 15 times a day, and a quote-unquote righteous pimp confiscates 100% of her earnings. There's some disturbing statistics behind this industry. Every two minutes, a child is exploited in the sex industry in the United States. According to USA Today, adults purchase children for sex at least 2.5 million times a year in the U.S., on average, a child might be raped by 6,000 men during a five-year period of servitude. Now, it is also shown that in Georgia alone, it is estimated that about 7,200 men, half of them in their 30s, go out to purchase sex with adolescent girls each month, averaging roughly around 300 a day. This is an industry that revolves around cheap sex on the fly. Young girls and women who are sold to about 50 men a day at about $25 a piece, while their handlers, their, their pimps, can make $150 to $200,000 a year per child. It is estimated there are about 100,000 to 150,000 underage child sex workers in the U.S., these girls aren't volunteering to be sex slaves. They're being lured, forced, trafficked into it. In most cases, they have no choice. In order to avoid detection, in some cases aided and abetted by the police, and to cater to male buyers' demand for sex with different women, pimps and the gangs and crime syndicates they work for have turned to sex trafficking into highly mobile enterprise, with trafficked girls, boys, and women constantly being moved from city to city, state to state, and country to country. Now, this is an incredibly lucrative business to be a part of. It's highly organized, and it is very sophisticated. Sex trafficking operates from the largest cities to the smallest towns in the United States. Absolutely no place is safe from this kind of brutal exploitation. Ranking in upwards of $9.5 billion a year in the U.S. alone by abducting and selling young girls for sex. $9.5 billion. Now, a big question is, where does this come from? Well, essentially, young girls have been sexualized in media for well over a decade. And we saw this largely beginning in the early 2000s with you know, people pushing the line just a little bit. But in the last five years or so, it has gotten to an astronomically unacceptable point. Uh, it's in music videos, billboards, television ads, and in clothing stores. When you have a clothing store that puts the words juicy on the posterior of a 10-year-old, you really have to look at yourself in the mirror and wonder if maybe there's something wrong with you because there is. Now marketers have created a huge demand for young girls uh, and has created a huge supply of over sexualized children. I mean it permeates everything and it's not even like the usual culprits like the music industry or some like uh, allegedly but probably Dan Schneider types. But, like, it's everything now. It's the clothing industry. It's the music industry. It's the beauty pageant industry. It's everything. Everything everywhere is sexualizing children now, and it's completely unacceptable. According to a 2000 study, 2007 study from the University of Alberta, as many as 90% of boys and 70% of girls aged 13 to 14 have had access to 
have had access to explicit sexual content at least once. And this is completely unacceptable. In other words, a way of really looking at it is that society is grooming children. It has been sexually grooming children for quite some time now. I mean, this isn't just something some pervy guy or some weirdo in your family does. But this is, being, this is taking place on a general social level through everything, through advertising, through daily interactions, all of the social media we ingest, to the pornified culture that we have to deal with, everything. And then these children, in turn, are being preyed upon by sexual predators, and probably a lot of them in those industries as well. Now, as bad as all of this is, and it is, it's unacceptably bad, this occurs to an, ex an even greater extreme in the third world. Now, while the pornified culture hasn't reached many third world countries, sex trafficking and the like are far greater and far worse in these countries. Imagine that. In places of high poverty, there's greater prostitution, including child prostitutes. Yeah, imagine that. It's almost like prostitution is poverty fueled or something. Despite what many of the uh, liberals like to say, they like to have, they, they like to claim that, oh, it's a choice and they really like to do it. That's why they do it kind of nonsense. That's a whole uh, destroying the liberal myths behind prostitution is a whole separate video altogether. But the, the point of this is showing that while we know that child prostitution, prostitution in general is a major problem in the developing world, the third world, etc., it is also a major problem in the United States. And this has gone completely under the radar of uh, many of the, demo the allegedly democratic institutions that there are. Uh, it's gone by most academia, and a, a lot of academics do actually pay attention to this and have spoken against it, but largely the mainstream academia has completely overlooked it because, let's face it, it's profitable. And as much as people are, are going to get mad at me saying it, it's capitalism. The point of chasing a dollar regardless of the social consequences because it's a free and fair choice has disastrous consequences. Who would have thought that not regulating something would be really horrible? Now, I'm not advocating a legitimization of prostitution. I have said previous in previous videos, I support the Nordic model because it is proven to work. I'm saying look at the profit motive and see what it does. That if something makes a dollar, it's okay. And that, you know, you have a right to enter business. You know, the whole free market, complete fucking garbage. You know, we know that. And it's largely responsible for this. Enforced poverty is making it. The profit motive behind you know, essentially children being sold. There's a demand for it, and if you feel the demand, therefore nothing is wrong. So you have a demand that's bad. You have a profit motive that's bad. You have a poverty co a system of poverty that coerces it, which is bad. And this is all traced back to capitalism. There's absolutely no denying this whatsoever. And it's blatantly obvious to anybody who has even a modicum of honesty. And this is far, far removed from these liberal notions of legitimizing it. If we just create unions for it, then, it, then it'll be okay. I mean, that's another argument that's been debunked, but that's a thing for a whole separate video that I'm, that I'm going to make sometime in the future. The point is, before I got off on this tangent, was that it is happening in the United States at huge, huge levels that people don't realize. And it's happening because of the pornified culture that we have. And we have a pornified culture because sex sells. And in the end, that is all that matters to capitalism, is selling. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.